Ladies and gentlemen, friends, both here and uh, out on the uh, airwaves, you're very welcome to the wonderful John Ryland's library here in Salford, Manchester. It's a real jewel uh, in the crown of a place that when I arrived at my hotel last night, the receptionist said, welcome to the Labour capital of England. And I thought that was the nicest uh, thing that I've had said to me at a hotel in quite a long time. And an especially warm welcome to, um, in the room here, to Margaret Halstead, members of her and John's family, uh, and some friends as well. Um, uh, it was really great. We had lunch very quickly because of trains, but really lovely to see you all here today. It's, it's, it's very special to us, I must say. I'm Mike Meacham. Um, I'm a member of the executive committee of the Society for the Study of Labour History, where I represent the interests, as best I can, of the Irish labour history uh, community. So it's a particular pleasure, and indeed, actually an honour, uh, to be chairing this first John Halstead Memorial Lecture. I mean, John, who was held in such high esteem within the labour history communities, both at home and abroad, who this society owes, I think, so much to for all his years of service that at times kept us going, I suspect. How fortunate we were to have John uh, in our company. It's no surprise, therefore, to find that he also drew such affection from all those who knew him. None more so, I suspect, than our speaker today, the eminent Irish Labour historian, Dr Emmett uh, O'Connor, who knew John for some 40 years and who reflects on their friendship in the forthcoming issue of Labour History Review. In it, if I may, Make a couple of quotes, Emmett. Uh, in it, Emmett says of John that he held his lifelong service to the society lightly, that he was generous to all scholars and particularly to aspiring ones. Emmett met him when he was a young aspiring uh, historian, that he had a very Irish sense of fun and not surprisingly was regarded by the Irish labour history community as not just a colleague, but a real friend. I've known Emmett for around 10 years, though we rarely meet. Uh, he living in Northern Ireland and teaching at the, the University of Ulster, and me uh, in the East End of London and St Mary's University. But I can say without wishing to embarrass him, I can say without hesitation that his immense output of scholarship has been a huge influence on and support for my research uh, in recent years. I'm not gonna run through his extensive CV, which you can find on our website anyway, and which you may already have read, or more likely know anyway, because you know Emmett, uh, so many people do. But I'd like to mention just four pieces briefly, four works. The groundbreaking labor history of Ireland, first published, would you believe it, Emmett, 30 years ago, uh, which first introduced me, and I suspect countless others, to the field. His more personal 2010 collaboration, Barry McLaughlin, uh, who's here with us today as well, in Spanish trenches, telling the story of the Irish who fought for the Republican side in the Spanish Civil War. Personal because they included his father, Peter. Uh, it's a cracking read, although I hear it's probably now I need reprinting, but it's a, it's a cracking read if you can get hold of it. And this, his latest book, Mark, photograph, um, it, about um, published only this month, uh, called Rotten Rod. That was a phrase used at the time. Telling the story of James Baird, who was one of hundreds of Protestant socialists and trade unionists who, along with thousands of Catholics, were driven from their places of work by loyalists in 1920. But for me, a presence running throughout Emmett's work over the years, 
has been the immense figure of Jim Larkin, the subject of today's lecture. Emmett's 2017 biography of Larkin, in my view, not only set a high bar in labor history biographical studies, but it was typically Emmett in being erudite, forthright, and honest. Though he concludes that Larkin remains the greatest Irish labor leader, unlike previous biographers, he spends half the book, it seemed to me, I added the pages up, on Larkin's later years of conflict and perhaps decline. Hence the book's question as a title, hero or wrecker. Jim Larkin was born here in England, in Liverpool, in, to Irish parents, and then went to Ireland. Today, Emmett, in a sense, is bringing him back with the themes of his lecture, how British was Big Jim Larkin, how international was Larkinism. At the end of the lecture, Emmett has uh, kindly agreed to take questions. How we deal with those questions, both here and online, I will deal once Emmett has uh, finished uh, his lecture. So without more ado, ladies and gentlemen, please give a warm welcome to Dr. Emmett O'Connor. 